Okay, first questions from Jessica. Uh, if you have questions for Indy, just uh, private message me and uh, we'll get the questions for you. Well, there's a lot of people in here. Oh yeah, there's a few. <laughs> All right. Hi, Indy. Um, so as you start obviously getting ready for this first round game, are you when you go into the tournament, are you game planning for your opponent or is it more getting ready to play your game and, you know, kind of going with that mentality? Uh, it's a little bit of both, especially because uh, we practice a week without knowing who we we're going to play. We only had um, suggestions or could only really, I guess, guess. But uh, it's really about us. We do game plan for our opponents, but the coaches have been really focusing on all the different teams that we could possibly play and what we need to work on, especially since once we get the games rolling, we're not going to have as much practice time as we're having now. So we're trying to cover a little bit of everything. And where, I guess, is your guys' mindset coming into this tournament? I mean, we've talked all year about how tight-knit this group is and well-balanced this team is. Is there a little bit more confidence than maybe in other years as you enter this tournament? Uh, most definitely a little bit of confidence, but I think we're all kind of playing with a chip on our shoulder, especially after the bracket came out. Um, but I'm confident that my team is ready to play. Thanks. All right, next we'll go to Cease. You talked a little bit about Coach. Uh, this mentioned several times about having better starts. And uh, could you talk about what might be different as far as your starts concerned in the NCAA tournaments, games? Uh, the starts are probably, um, how do you say? Um, we're in a different environment, so our starts do need to be a lot better. Um, a lot of teams are going through what we're going through. So we really have no excuses um, to start slow. So the coaches have most definitely emphasized that during practices and meetings that we, we can't have a slow start because you have a slow start. It could, it could end your career, it could end your season. You can lose the game. Uh, you never really lose the game towards the end of the game. It's always possessions earlier in the game that cause you to lose the game. So our coaches are really emphasizing us not to have breakdowns. Also, as yesterday, uh, obviously big news out of San Antonio about the amenities and uh, particularly coach touched on that about the, the workout equipment wasn't up to, up to snuff and it needs to be corrected. He sure it's would. I just wondered about your thought as an athlete. What, what did you think about the situation yesterday? I know you well read and up and up. So what's your thoughts? It wasn't surprising. <laughs> I just think it was surprising because um, people finally spoke up and exposed, I guess, what was really happening and what was really going on. But it's been like that for years. It's not something new. I think it's uh, worse now because we are in a bubble and we can't control a lot of the things that we normally would be able to control. We can't leave. Um, we have to use the amenities that they give us. Luckily, um, our trainer, Tana, packed some things because I'm, she kind of knew that it could be like that. Um, but it's unfortunate for other teams who aren't as blessed as us and who don't have the equipment that we have access to. When you were saying you weren't surprised, did that happen like going to non-conference, going to other SEC teams, or you know what what were you alluding to? If I could ask. Uh, it's not a surprise because I have a guy, I have friends who play on the men's side, and I talk to them throughout the season and what they have access to, especially the SEC tournament, listening to what they could do, what we couldn't do. Um, so I keep up <laughs> and we discuss some of the things and I ask them questions about, OK, how is it over there? What do y'all get to do? Uh, we can't do this. And even some of them are kind of shocked to hear what what we have to go through. So I wasn't it wasn't surprised when uh, we learned about the weight room because it's it happens. <laughs> Can you give one example of like what an SEC tournament like your, your male counterparts are able to do and you weren't as females weren't able to? Um, I would say, hmm, it's a really good question because we're actually all in different type of tournaments. I have uh, friends who play in the Big Ten, uh, SEC, so it's kind of different. Um, but I guess I would say the food. <laughs> so far, the food. Um, and seeing how, um, talking to my male counterparts, they were able to, I guess, eat, <laughs> eat all together even after they got out of quarantine. And unfortunately we have not been able to do that. Um, they seem to have a lot more access to one another 
Um, and we do not, except for practice times and what they call recreational times. Um, but I was talking to some of my friends and they were like, oh, we're going to eat. Um, like, oh, you guys get to eat as a team? Like, that hasn't happened yet for us. We're not allowed to do that. We have to grab our food and go back to the room. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Mike. Hey, Indy, how does your guys' previous experience in the NCAA tournament, I know obviously there wasn't a tournament last year, but going back to your sophomore year, your freshman year, how can you guys draw on those experiences to help you guys make a deep run this year? Uh, it was, it really just be the environment. Um, a lot of us have been here and we know what to expect. We know how the scheduling goes. Um, we know how it can be, especially not feeling like you have a home court advantage. And I have to say this is probably the first year where we kind of have a home court advantage because we're playing in San Antonio. And we also know how it feels to be the underdog. And um, I think with those experiences and proving people wrong and knowing what it takes to make it far will help this year. And I know you said you guys haven't, you know, you looked at a bunch of different teams, but when you look at Troy, they like to get up and down. They like to run the third of the nation in scoring. What do you see from the, the Troy team that you guys will have to prepare against come Monday? Uh, most definitely rebounding. Uh, they're a really good rebounding team, uh, unlike you touched on transition. But I would say with the SEC, we do have a lot of transition teams, and they kind of reminded us a lot about Arkansas, but the difference is that they all crash the boards. So, and I thank our SEC schedule for helping us with Troy because um, we play top, top transition teams. We kind of know what to expect. We know how we have to get back, especially early in the season, we played DePaul and DePaul got up and down the floor a lot. <laughs> so it's not a surprise to what we need to do, but our most concern, our, our main concern is rebounding. Awesome, thank you, Wendy. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Jim. Yeah, hi, I, I wanted to ask about, to follow up, you said uh, it wasn't a surprise and that quote, people finally spoke up. Are we just in a new age of athlete empowerment to, to speak up, whether it's about equity issues, whether it's racial injustice issues? And do you expect that voice to continue throughout this tournament? Do you expect to see athletes speaking up over the next two weeks? Uh, most definitely, we are in a new generation. I think a lot of times in the past, people have been afraid to speak up, uh, especially concerning like blackballing or the consequences of speaking out against NCA. But from what everybody's been through this year with uh, racial injustices, um, inequality, and COVID, um, people have found in themselves that they need to speak up. And I think like the WNBA players and the NBA players uh, on social media for speaking up as well, that hasn't happened a lot in past years, but they seem to do a good job using their voices, knowing that we can always use our voices. And I've talked to a lot of them. Um, they're great advocates for us. They went through it. It's just, they were, they played in a time where they just didn't speak up, but um most definitely, you will probably see a lot more people uh, speaking up throughout the tournament, uh, especially as it goes. Um, we learned that we get better access to a better weight room <laughs> as we make it on. So we'll see how that goes. Thank you. All right. Are there any other questions for Indy? Awesome. Thanks, Indy. Thank you all. All right. We'll have a Leah Wilson coming in pretty soon. So uh, stay tuned. Hold on a second. 